Kafelnikov to serve to begin this best of five setter against Leighton Hewitt. And a big kick serve draws Hewitt out side the court, and Kafelnikov has the first point. Interesting to see, Barry, as you mentioned, will Kafelnikov stand on the baseline and try to beat Hewitt from that location, or will he take some chances and come to the net? He's got two points early on his serve here without going to the net. Kafelnikov, not a type of player to just sort of blow somebody off the court, Mike. He's got good power, but not overwhelming power. And to me, that's one of the beauties of his game. He's very thorough, a lot of finesse, and there's a nice forehand up the line. Outright winner off the forehand from standing in the middle of the court. For Kafelnikov. He owns 23 titles in his career. Grand Slam record impressive, 90 and 27. As you mentioned, he plays an awful lot of tennis. Loves the game. Plays it all over the world. Oh, yes. Hewitt getting into the match now. A fine two hander down the line. Is one of his best shots, especially the return of serve. He's not that tall and has to catch a lot of balls right up at about shoulder height. But the power that he gets into that two hander is tremendous. Second serve coming for Kafelnikov. He's a three time Grand Slam champion, twice at Roland Garro and at the Australian Open in 99. No. And he whips that forehand wide. 40 30. Definitely had the idea there to come in behind that shot, overhit it slightly. That's the other thing about Hewitt. You just can't come in on a normal shot against this kid. He is very difficult to play against, keeps the ball low, especially on passing shots. And as Andy Roddick found out the other night, he's extremely fast, chases down just about everything. Kafelnikov charging, but Hewitt standing in and beating him down the line. Again, there's that two hander. That is his yes. bread and butter shot. Great control down the line. Another look at this shot. Kafelnikov hits the two hander cross court. A lot of opening up that line, and he plays it safely. Good control. Might that change the way Kafelnikov attacks? Might he go to. Layton's forehand Let's next time after seeing that. Exactly, Mike, or perhaps right down the center. I tell you, maybe he can jam him just a little bit. You find things out early in a match. You go in on a two-hander, you get past, you say, hey, I better think that one over again. Part of the psychology of the game. That one was just wide. Looked like it might have caught the line, so Hewitt has a break point. What a start. The fella cough at 40 love, it suddenly disappears. Yevgeny not real happy with that last call. Gave that lines person a, an extra look. You do that early in a match. So now facing a break point. And oh, here oh, yes. the first court forehand has the first break of set one of the men's single semifinal. Tremendous running forehand from Leighton Hewitt. What a shot to break serve. Well, again, we saw the speed of Hewitt. He just accelerates so quickly. That first step is where he gets it going. I'll tell you what, Mike, if he can keep hitting shots like that, the Felnikov's in for a long afternoon or maybe a short afternoon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is best of five sets, remember, but. And it's funny, I think there's a, certainly a different psychology playing a best of five, as, as you would know. You get a lead maybe in the first set. You want to win the first set, obviously, but if you fall behind by a set in a best of five, you don't feel as much pressure, I would think. The score becomes very important, Mike. You get down 40 love, uh, let's say, on the other guy's serve, and a lot of times a player will say, okay, I'm not going to kill myself at that particular point because you know you got a lot of tennis to play. And Hewitt looking very sharp now. Hewitt's cross court backhand foiled Kafelnikov there. about Hewitt who's not a big man he's got a good serve stands only 5'11 weighs 150 but a bit of a deceptive serve able to move it in the box put some spins on it 
15 over. He's not going to blow you away with it, no. but he's going to give you something to think about. Great tactician for a young player, only 20 years old, and he knows how to use the court, uses the angles, occasionally will hit the drop shot, change a pace. Uh, a classic counter puncher, Leighton Hewitt. Already two five set matches, as we showed you graphically early in this tournament. And, you know, you wonder it is a two week tournament. You have a day off here and there. Did those five setters wear you down at all? Hewitt's only 20 years old. It probably won't make a difference, but still, it's a, it's a mental grind, this two week Grand Slam, the U.S. Open. Go long, good depth again from the two hander of Leighton Hewitt. 30 15. Hewitt born in Adelaide, Australia, living in Adelaide, one of the few players that doesn't live in Monte Carlo these days. I tell everybody, Mike, I'd like to be a just a tennis real estate agent in Monte Carlo. I'd make a fortune. Yes, you would. Second serve for Hewitt. He's played a number of five setters this year. And had the best record of anybody on tour. No. Five and two, a double fault. It's a one part of Hewitt's game. If I were coaching, I would work on it, and that is the serve. He, he's got a pretty good first serve, but it isn't really tremendous, and he's got a good motion. I think he could develop a much tougher first serve. Almost got one there. 116 miles per hour, but a fault. Hewitt became the youngest man ever to qualify in the history of the Australian Open back in 97 as a 15 year old. So he's something of a veteran now in his fourth year, really, oh, playing professionally. Beautiful day for tennis here in New York. A few clouds in the sky, but the wind not a factor at all thus far. It, it can certainly be a factor in this huge bowl. Well, Jennifer Capriati talked about the wind affecting her in her match against Venus Williams yesterday in the sense that it made her feel like it took a lot more effort to hit the ball against the wind, and that wore her down physically and mentally. She was exhausted. Hadn't played a tough match at all in the Open until that one with Venus and uh, lost a 4-1 okay. lead. Yes. The first set and eventually the match. So, looking good. Holds his serve to the left to love in the first set. So Kafelnikov now will throw it up with the sun in his face. Does not wear a hat. So we'll see how this impacts the toss of Kafelnikov. Not much. Fifteen. When I first saw Kafelnikov at Wimbledon, like quite a while ago, and he was just such a raw talent, if you will. I mean, just played the game so easily. And thirty love as Kafelnikov rips off a forehand, set up by a solid serve to the backhand. Now he's played a lot of tennis in this tournament as well, Barry. Two five setters in the opening two rounds just to get here. In fact, he was down two sets to one in both of those. So he was able to come back, win the final two sets against a qualifier in the second round, George Bastel. And uh, that, that's, I think that woke him up a little yeah. bit. And you mentioned, it. could it take something out of him, even though he's had a, a rest of the day? I think over a two week span, those five setters do take their toll. Temperatures have been in the second week of this tournament very moderate. So players have not had to battle really high heat and humidity. But today you might see that be a factor. This game being played, this match being played at noontime and maybe later with Pete Sampras if the humidity rises. His first game of this single semifinal, he trails two games to one. Hewitt leads the tour with 62 match wins, 
through the quarterfinals came into the tournament with the lead so he's played the most tennis has won the most matches this year on the uh, ATP tour. Big forehand gives him a 30 love lead. 30, 30. Kind of an interesting stat, Barry, that uh, the player who has come into this tournament with the most wins during the season leading up to the U.S. Open has only won this championship one time since 1987. That was mm. Pete Sampras in 93. So having a great year and winning a lot of matches doesn't necessarily mean you're yeah. going to have success here. Kafelnikov with 103 total matches, but a lot of those in doubles, 21 and 14. In doubles alone. Oh! Late call as Kafelnikov's backhand flies over the baseline. Hewitt quickly to 40 love. Psychologically, in a five set match, Mike, there's something about winning points quickly. As you know, you're going to be out there for at least three sets. It's not that hot today, but I think as a player, you go out there and when you get to 40 love, you say, let's close this game out. I don't want to have a lot of rallies right now. On that baseline, good control from Leighton Hewitt. So a game is three one. love for Leighton Hewitt in a 3 1 lead. Hewitt's two hand reminds me a bit of the great Andre Agassi two hander down the line. Wonderful control. He kind of eases into the shot, doesn't try and do too much with it. And that was a good example of it right there. Hewitt right now seems to have the best of it from the baseline. Kafelnikov hitting a slice one handed backhand which you rarely see him do from the baseline. He'll he'll use that shot coming in. But an error there. Time for Kafelnikov's forehand evens it up at 50 all. I'll tell you what was impressive about Hewitt the other night with Andy Roddick. I mean, he hit some serves 135 miles an hour. Now Kafelnikov's last serve was 115 miles an hour. But the fact that Hewitt got his racket on some of these serves yeah. and got him back in the court yeah. to prolong points, that was impressive. Absolutely. Roddick, I would say the biggest server in the game today, including Pete Sampras. He cranks him up at 135 plus. Or Goran Ivanisevic. Yeah. There was a beautiful inside out for him from Leighton Hewitt. And great control. Watch him line this up, just sweeps. Around the ball, around the side of the ball again, about six inches inside that sideline. Hewitt would love to get another break right here. Go up 4 1 and two service breaks. Shadows creeping in over part of the court as Kafelnikov double faults. 15 14. His first double of the match and a bad time for it puts him down double break point. Service line. Kafelnikov having trouble now. Oh, Hewitt nets that one. That's easy. You know they say players. Don't think about past performances, but I can't help but think that Hewitt with a 4 1 edge in the previous meetings between these two feels a little confident out there today as he starts this match. Well, I'm sure you've had some of those series records, maybe in your favor, when you took on players. How did that affect you? I used to love playing my old buddy Butch Buckholz, uh, another American, and uh, somehow I'd always slip through at the very end. We had close matches, but I did have some confidence against Butch. If he's out there listening in Albania today, Butch, bad luck. <laughs> so another break of serve by Leighton Hewitt, his second in this first set, and he has a 4-1 lead in this U.S. Open men's singles semifinal. Hewitt to serve in a 4-1 lead. That time could fill in the coffin with an aggressive ground stroke.
This is the second time these two have met in a semifinal. Stuttgart indoors last year. Hewitt winning in three sets. Then went on to lose the tournament final to Wayne Ferrero. Double fault by Leighton Hewitt. He's down love 30. Hewitt's second double of the match. He took a big chance down love 15. It's a good time to go for a big second serve. But he does have the break by right? two breaks, and that might influence his thinking out there a little bit. Right now. A toss maybe a little low as he's got a second serve. Triple break point for Kafelnikov. He had a plane flying over the stadium a moment ago that might have disrupted. That's one thing that's changed in this tournament over the last few years. They've been able to divert yeah. some air traffic heading into LaGuardia, which has, uh, I think, made it a much better situation for the players. For sure. That's Fifteen. Kafelnikov, one break point gone. Our good friend. Mayor David Dinkins, uh, the former mayor, I should say. I saw him last night at a dinner. And you still call him Mr. Mayor, didn't you? Call him Mr. Mayor, absolutely. <laughs> a guy who can change the uh, way planes take off and land at a major airport. He's got some firepower. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> That's a great return by Kafelnikov. Kept in by Hewitt. Those ground strokes. Wood kept it alive. All that backhand approach. That's the second time he was having a pass with his backhand. And saves another great point. Can the great control. Watch how high Hewitt hits this backhand. He's out of position now. Kafelnikov senses a big opportunity. Look at this shot down the line. Perfectly timed. Great control. And by golly, I told you we'd see her. There is Kim Kleisters. Hewitt's girlfriend from Belgium. I don't think she's missed one of his matches in a long time. And he was out at the women's tournament at Stanford, Cal or Stanford, California, just there as a spectator. Wasn't playing any tennis. I was very impressed. Jeez. A little, little busman's holiday right there, yeah, for Hewitt. So three break points saved by Leighton Hewitt. Hewitt's first ace of the match right down the center. Hewitt's won nine career titles. Bidding for a tenth. At Hewitt's. First grand slam of his career. And now he has the advantage. This could be a turnaround game in this first set for Kafelnikov. Should he let three slip away and fall down 5-1. Kafelnikov's play behind the baseline. Like it's such a contrast to Andre Agassi, who loves to move in. Gets caught a lot of times, but moves in. I believe that looks like Andy Roddick sitting there on the left. We'll check it out. Could be. It sure looks like it. You know, big serve gives him the advantage again. 114 miles per hour. I'm speculating, but we will find out shortly, I'm sure. He certainly wasn't 
arguing that last call. That ball was right on the line. So Kafelnikov serving to stay in this first set. He's had his serve broken twice and an unforced error. Thing about the score, which we've talked about, Mike. Tomorrow is the championship match. No day of rest between the semis and the finals for the men, and so that is a definite factor now. All four of these guys, no minds, certainly will affect the way these guys play. Yes. Yes. Here, and a forehand winner ripped by the late Hughes. Got Kafelnikov in a love 30 hole. Sharp angle. Oh, that's a great shot. Hewitt with eight winners now. And now Kafelnikov, second serve, down love 30. And a double oh, fall. Kafelnikov looks a little off his service game. He's off his service game. His forehand and his backhand as well, off to a very slow start, Kafelnikov. And now he gets footfall. What else could go wrong? Triple set point for Hewitt. Okay, oh, and there it is. is. And love broken once again for the third time in the set. And Leighton Hewitt has a one set lead in this best of five in hopes of reaching the U.S. Open final. Hewitt won four tournaments last year. Adelaide, Sydney, Scottsdale, and Queens. Now two sets away from reaching the Grand Slam final. But a long way to go in a best of five. Many things can happen. But it's nice to have a one set lead, no doubt. Mm. Felnikov's forehand. 15. He shouts out in frustration. You're so right about five sets, Mike, though. It, it, it's just a different mindset totally. When you walk out there as a player, you know you're in for at least a three set encounter, and it could be a, a long afternoon. Well, on this court, it's a little less trying mentally than on, let's say, Roland Garrow, when you know you're going to have to hit. So many shots to win a best of five. And Gafelnikov's forehand passing shot, brilliant. Well, the points are tough. We're not about that as we have another look at this forehand by Kafelnikov. Nice rolling forehand to the right there, cross court, good control. That's, he finally hits the ball in the center of the racket. He has been really having trouble. And when that sort of thing is happening for a player, what is he thinking? Is he thinking my feet? My legs, my coordination. What's wrong here? I think normally your your footwork goes first. You, you just aren't getting the ball quick enough, and when the feet aren't in position, everything else kind of falls apart. So I think Kafelnikov now has just got to speed it up a little bit. Another double fault by Leighton Hewitt. Round 15:30. You mentioned the play, Mike. It's interesting. Certainly. The points are much longer at Roland Garros on that red clay at the French. But on the other hand, that nice soft dirt isn't as hard on the bones and the, and the feet. So a little bit of an offsetting situation there. He went going for a big serve. Had some troubles on his first serve. Four double faults. Fifteen unforced errors. Well, Hewitt has yet to come into net after a set in a few games. kafelnikov has been up there six times, has only won one point. I was just thinking to myself, I haven't seen him get him thinking about going into ball. And the reason is he's got passed every time he goes up. I guess the question is, will he continue to try that strategy? Will he try to force Hewitt's hand and make him Kafelnikov with passing shots. Is not going to out rally Leighton Hewitt from the back of the a lot of balls, but it's not going to miss too many. Ah, oh, oh, 
Well, yeah, it was indeed. From an advantage point, it was tough to see those close calls on the baseline. There's a look at it from Kafelnikov's view. 40-30, Hewitt in the first game of the second set, up a set already. Set a one love lead he has never trailed in the match in the first two games of the first set and then went on to win for the next five. So Kofelnikov's got to somehow pull himself together. He's had a great record this year on hard court, top six record. Agassi had the best record at 34 and six. Leighton Hewitt was third best thus far in the season, 33 and 9, and Kafelnikov 28 and 10. So he's had a lot of success on hard courts this year. Mirny to become the first guy to win both the singles and the doubles year after year, and that was our old friend John McEnroe way back in the mid 80s. 14. Kolnikov finally gets on the board with ace number one. Another foot fault. It's a second, I believe. That uh, foot fault had got Leighton Hewitt in a little hot water earlier in the tournament. Kofelnikov can't close the game out. But Hewitt had some trouble with one of the linesmen calling foot faults on him. Complained vehemently to the chair umpire about that linesman. A lot of racial overtones to it. Although the USTA did not find him. Kofelnikov on a run toward the net, forehand knocked off for a winner, and they're even at one game apiece. That, that incident with James Blake that you're referring to, Mike got, got more press for two or three days here at the Open than all the matches combined. Well, it was, you know, it's it's tough to determine what players are going through, what they're saying on the court during competition. Right. Because you know the tempers are flying out there in some ways. It's not like a football game by any means, but you know, tremendous hey. pressure on these players. Uh, John McEnroe used to say some things that were outrageous on the court. Jimmy Connors as well. Do it! Outburst, drew some attention. I once chased a woman spectator out into the lobby at the Fort Worth Arena. <laughs> Years ago, I got so upset I couldn't believe it. She was giving me trouble for about a set and a half as we look at that two-hander down the line. And I said, I'm not putting up with this anymore. And one of the uh, aides on our tour grabbed me from behind and said, come on, man, let's go back and play some tennis. <laughs> that I would have been long gone in this era. Oh. <laughs> I think that's the thing that people forget. You, know, you, you stand down there as a single entity. Going head to head with somebody, and uh, you've got no other way to uh, outlet your emotions and energies in this game uh, except on the officials or the linesmen. Once in a while, on your opponent. I mean, you can't you can't rip your teammates by any means. There are no teammates. Exactly. I think that's the beauty of the sport. Frankly, it's, it is a definite one on one situation, totally individual. And I'm opposed to the idea of having coaches out in normal tournament matches. Davis Cup's another story. It's team against team. I really don't like the idea of a coach on the court. That's the beauty of the game. The guy's out there trying to work it all out for himself. Poor young woman. <laughs> you at 40 love. 
40-15. Can't finish it out. Hewitt's had a great record against American players. If he should win this match and face Pete Sampras, perhaps, who plays Marat Safin next. He's had a six-game winning streak, six-match winning streak against the Americans. That one's just wide. And overall, 22 and 11. So the Australian contingent here at the Open, I'm sure delighted of seeing that. John Newcomb, I saw just a few moments ago. Double fault. That's the fifth of the day for Hewitt. And their other young star, Mark Philippus, is recovering from some physical problems. And, uh, he'll be back in action, I know, in the next two or three months. So the Aussies back at the top of world competition. A couple of years ago, Philippoussis was so impressive here that everyone was touting him as the next great Aussie. And then Hewitt came along, a little steadier player, a little more winning percentage. And now he's kind of surpassed Philippoussis as far as the Australian ladder. Hey. And so, holding on to Nathan Hewitt for a 2 1 lead. In the second set, you're watching the men's single semifinal at the U.S. Open 2001. We're at Arthur Ashe Stadium Court. Fifteen. For Kafelnikov, who seems to be getting himself in gear now. Probably understanding you're down a set. Getting down two sets would be kind of tough, although he's come back twice in this tournament from two sets to one down to win matches. That forehand just missed. Open stance on that shot. Sometimes Kafelnikov's footwork. Just a little suspect. I think he tries to save some energy, use his great talent, and just sort of arm the ball back. That time it didn't work. This is his sixth Grand Slam tournament semifinal. He has reached the final three times in the first five tries and won the championship on a couple of occasions. Oh, there is a great backhand down the line. He is again. He has been so effective with that two-hander. Kafelnikov hits a Good looking approach shot, but watch the control on this two hander. Just about six inches inside that sideline. Great follow through there from Leighton Hewitt. That's misses. First serve. We have yet to see Kavelnikov serve and volley. Like he just hasn't come in. And the minute I say it, he just <laughs> to. And that might be why. <laughs> Here. Swinging serve. This ball bouncing out wide. Look at Hewitt control that cross court. Now a break point for Leighton Hewitt. Four straight points. And Hewitt has a break in set two and a 3 1 lead. At this point in the match, if you're Leighton Hewitt, the main job now is just to concentrate. You've got the set, you've got the break. Just keep it going. Don't change anything at all. The Felnikov making enough errors. Best surface for Leighton Hewitt is the one he's playing on. This is called Pro Deco Turf. Been here at the Open for a number of years. They resurface these courts every year. Players saying that this year maybe a little bit quicker, but uh, for sure this is 
Hewitt's best service. He can change directions. Uses power from the baseline. Kofelnikov on the backhand side on a couple of occasions, not that time. Kofelnikov using that slice backhand, keeping that ball low, and that's a tough shot to come over. Hewitt loves to come over that ball slightly on the two-hander, but with the ball about six inches off the court, that is a tough shot to hit. Kofelnikov delaying a little bit now, trying to get himself set. 15 all. He's had uh, quite a rivalry with the Australians over his professional career. Second serve. Second serve. His uh, first tournament quarterfinal is a Grand Slam event. It was 95 in the Australian Open. Lead here. Hewitt got a break on that one ball, Mike. It definitely looked like it sort of curved out on that sideline, but no call. Second serve coming. Felnikoff's record against Australians has not been very good of late. Three and ten, including the four or five matches he's lost here to Leighton Hewitt over the course of the last few years. Well, that's a great gift by Kafelnikov. Wow. And he got to the man in seemingly good position, but he would just rip them across court. That is a terrific point. Maybe the best point of the match thus far as Kafelnikov hit what looked to be a wonderful approach shot, but Hewitt right on top of it hits the cross court. You've kind of got to be saying to himself, what do I have to do to win a point up there? Eleven times he's been in, only won three of those. Hewitt still has yet to come to net. Maybe he'll come up when he shakes hands at the end of the match. I'm sure he'll be happy to, as long as he's the victor. Now 40-30, so he went back from 15-30 down, a chance to go up 4-1. Hewitt, who got to the semifinals of the Cincinnati tournament earlier this summer, lost to his countryman, Patrick Rafter. That certainly is not a bad loss these days. Rafter had a great summer. And I guess the question with Rafter is, will he have another summer? In play, yeah. As a tennis player, you'd hate to see him leave the game right now. He's that near the top of it. And that wow. floats Thank long. You. So Kafelnikov with a couple of unforced errors falls Good down nice. one four in the second set. He's down a set here in the men's singles semifinal. Love 15. Okay.
triple break point. Again, he's already had three breaks of Gafelnikov serve, four, including the one in this set. And how close to that sideline that forehand goes. Again, Hewitt with super control today. 13 winners. Oh, another yeah, forehand was. cross court. Gafelnikov comes in once again, gets past. Hewitt leads 5 1. Up there 12 times has only won three points, and that is why Hewitt just unbelievable from the backcourt today. His passing shots have been superb. This is a remarkable score when you think about it. 6 1 Hewitt serving to go up two sets to love, and two 6 1 sets. We've only been at it 49 minutes. This is what you call a route so far. Uh, you got to wonder how Kafelnikov could change up his strategy if Hewitt keeps hitting the ball as cleanly as he is right now. What might work for Kafelnikov? No. That's how Hewitt finally blitz his one over the baseline. Love to see miss too much. And Off in his second U.S. Open semifinal. His first one back in '99, he survived Richard Krychek. What a match that was! Seven, six, and five sets. After having a two-set lead, that's for six. eventually lost to Andre Agassi in three sets, four sets after leading by a set. Right now, in some deep trouble against Leighton Hewitt. Four semifinalists from last year are back. Pancho Segura looking on. The, the mighty Segu, as we call him, boy, could he play tennis? Actually, the first big player to use two hands. I mean, all the two handed shots today really owe their allegiance, if you will, to Pancho Segura. What a wonderful forehand he had with the two hander. We called him sneaky, Mike, because he, <laughs> he rarely came to net, but when he did, he kind of snuck in there, and all of a sudden, there he would be. Wonderful ambassador. Of the sport of tennis throughout the world. In fact, in the days when Pancho Gonzalez and Segura were playing together, uh, we would go to towns after they'd been there, and everybody'd come up and say, "Where's Pancho? Where's Pancho?" And we'd say, "Oh, <laughs> Gonzalez is, you know, doing this." And, no, the little guy, the little guy, <laughs> the funny man. Oh, he was a terrific, terrific guy. To oh, I thought with. they were coming up to you looking for you to pay the uh, the bills they left behind, <laughs> the various restaurants in those towns. Well, that <laughs> happened occasionally too. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're an ambassador, you can do that kind of thing. I mean, you've done that yourself. Uh, I mean, roll through. into town and <laughs> spread around some goodwill. Just got That's to the, the final story on Segu. He and Tony Trabert would always play the opening match when Gonzalez was playing Lou Hote for the big championship in the Kramer days. And Segu would come up to me and say, well, we'll get this donkey match over with. He called it the donkey match. <laughs> <laughs> They'd play a pro set in those days. Oh, yeah. In big towns like Texarkana and Des Moines. <laughs> big towns. <laughs> right. All on Route 66. You at two points away now. <laughs> oh, that's a great shot. Finally, Kafelnikov hits that inside out forehand. Just catches the sideline. That's it. Yeah, Kafelnikov has a break point. And brush over that ball. And look where that ball hits right in the corner. That's his best forehand of the day, and he hasn't hit too many good ones. Five forehand winners. Now you're Kafelnikov here. You're down a set. You're down five-one. You want to prolong this set? Well, I think what you do, you try and hit short points. If I were in his shoes, I'd hit a few drop shots. I'd do anything to try and make Hewitt move. 
knowing that I'm probably going to lose a set anyway. But as long as I'm going to lose it, let, let my opponent do something, move him around a little bit. And he does prolong set number two, but down 2 5, he will serve. Well, Hewitt got here by defeating Andy Roddick in five sets the other night. One of the marquee matchups of this tournament. That one came just after Agassi and Sampras, so things have been happening at night. Exciting stuff at the U.S. Open, and later tonight, the U.S. Open women's final. Venus Williams and Serena, her sister. So Kofonikov's love 15. Approach to the net, backhanded into the net. You mentioned Mike as as you arrived today. The the Williams sisters out practicing with each other. That's kind of unusual. Well, not unusual for them, but the fact that they're going to play for the title tonight. Well, the whole thing seems unusual. I mean, you, you imagine playing against a sibling in a match of that magnitude. You're looking for an edge yeah. against your opponent, right? So, 15 old. what are you thinking? I remember when they were eight years old how I took advantage of them when I got the extra toy. I don't know. You're going to work on something. Exactly. You're going to dig deep into the family background to get an advantage against somebody who obviously there's great love between the two sisters. So, how do you turn that off for the hour and a half? So Hewitt two points away from the set. Making it look easy. He has not missed very often on nope. passing shots. I love Hewitt's return of serve stance. He is very low down there, kind of like Andre Agassi. Ready to go in either direction. Another double fall from Kovalnikov. Now it's match a double set point I should say would be match point if we were playing best of three and then uh, well, let's see if Kafelnikov can stay alive here oh. well, down to a second serve again oh. what a line yeah. oh. Oh. Hey, oh, yes. look at you he is pumped up as he drills that two hundred down the line. That is the Hewitt makes two sets to left. Of Yevgeny Kovalnikov serve in the match. Hewitt by two sets, six one, six two. Back for the third in a moment. I said Murat Safin beat Hewitt in France, but it was Juan Carlos Ferrero in the quarterfinals. Hewitt also had a win against Andy Roddick in that French Open. I thought Ferrero was going to win that tournament, Mike. He was on such a roll over there. Kierton just too tough. Disappointing uh, Australian Open for Hewitt this year. That's a court you would figure he had a lot of success yep. on. Lost to Carlos Moyer. Round of uh, 32 after beating Tommy Haas and Jonas Borkman. So this could be Hewitt's uh, coming out party in Grand Slams right here. He is overdue, in my opinion. He's, he's been close, knocking at the door, and I think this could be his opportunity. You know, there's a guy right here by the name of Tom Ross, his agent, who lives out in California, who's been with Leighton Hewitt since he burst on the scene. I'm sure he's biting his fingernails right now. Too good. Finally, Kafelnikov knocks off a volley. Look at the best forehand volleys we've seen all day. 
nice motion. He swung through that ball a bit more than you normally do on a volley, and it worked for him. Down two sets, down 40 15 in the first game of the third set. It's going through Kafelnikov's mind now as, he, as he's saying, I've got to well, win games. I've got to get a yeah. set somehow. I think you saw it right there, Mike. That, that forehand yeah, volley had some stick to it. He's coming in a really good set all the way. First game, third set. Forehand ends up in the net, and Leighton Hewitt has the first game of the third set. Good look at this huge center court, as we've mentioned here at Arthur Ashe Stadium. A normal court only 60 feet wide by 120 feet long, total running room, but this thing probably at least another 10 to 15 feet on all sides. So from a defensive standpoint, which Hewitt is one of the best counter punchers, gives you a little extra running room, which is uh, I always find that interesting, Mike, because the guys that play on the on the center court most of the time have a, a slight advantage. If they go out and play on court seven, they're playing on 60 by 100. They're going to run out of room, if you will. Maybe they'll make maybe 15 all the courts be this side. <laughs> now they're going to love me here at the national. I'm going to redesign this place. Well, the people that build the courts are going to love you because <laughs> they'll need more square footage here. Right. The National Tennis Center. So Kafelnikov kicks off this service game. Rare error on the backhand side for Hewitt. Well, you can see Hewitt is so into this match. He makes the error on that shot and he was really unhappy with himself. This guy is into losing one point at this point in the match. Well, he seems to have the attitude of every shot. Got to make every shot and let's see what happens. And uh, that's a difficult thing to do when you face five set, best of five set situations. But I think that's the kind of thing you develop over the course of a year. To me, this is the toughest time in a best of five match. You're up two sets to love. Normally, you'd be in the locker room at any other tournament. The match is over, and you've got to say to yourself, come on, let's keep it going now. Let's keep it going. And, uh, this is a tough part of any five set. Belnikov to the net. Well, that's going to be good. That one. A looping. Half long for here. Great disguise from Leighton here on a top spin two hundred. That's heels. Watch this now. He swings through this one, catches Kafelnikov. Yevgeny takes a step forward and leaves a lot of room behind. Look at the follow through on that top spin two hander. Beautiful shot from Leighton Hewitt. A little bit of the magic of Hewitt. We've seen the steadiness and some of the spectacular passing shots. But can be a creative player as well. well. Here's a chance early in this fight, in this third set for Hewitt to get the early break again. Oh, that's that's easy. Easy. And here it is, first game, third set. Hewitt with a chance to break. Hewitt already has five breaks of serve in this match. Has had his serve broken just once. And he's had a break early against Kafelnikov in each of the first two sets. Opportunities and has a two love lead. A team like if somebody walked into this match right now and looked up at the scoreboard, they would say, wait a second, is that a mistake up there? 6 1, 6 2, and two love after an hour and six minutes of play. Kofelnikov now firmly with his back against the wall, down two sets and a break in the third set. This will be a test of his fortitude and his perseverance. How he plays the rest of this set, and if he can get it into the fourth set, what happens there? But right now, it doesn't look like it's going to go past three. Oh, that is so good. You have just waited for Kafanikov to make his move. It's behind him. Kafanikov had a little slump early in the season. Went out in the first round, three straight tournaments. After some Davis Cup troubles, lost in Monte Carlo and then Munich. Second round loss in Italy. Then rebounded to have a good finish 
to get to this point. Now he's in deep trouble. 30 love. 30 love. A few whistles from this crowd against Kafelnikov. And he plays a lot of tennis and at times in his career I would say there has been some question whether he's given it 110 percent today there's no question in my mind this guy wants to win he's out there trying as hard as he can he's just getting outplayed. 40 though. And an ace from Leighton Hewitt. So he's down the center 114 miles per hour from Leighton Hewitt. Only his second ace of the match. It's him up 40 love and a chance to go up three love. Record in five set matches is very good, 17 and 8, but he's got to find a way to win his serve and then break through against Hewitt and do it again just to get to a fourth set. So he's in a deep hole. That one's well, he was down, as you said, two sets to one to Pastel in the second round here. Somehow pulled that one out. But, uh, I think right now. Miracle is going to have to happen for Kafelnikov to get back in this match. Look at the winners and unforced errors. 33 for oh. Evgeny. This is the part of the, of the game of tennis which is so different than any other sport. You can't go to the bench or the huddle and, and have someone inspire you, motivate you, give you a little clue or hint as to what to do. Love this. You're on your own. Team tennis, where you have visited recently, uh, Mike, you say, hey, listen, let's bring in another player. Let's have a little substitution here. I love that. Coach can give you the hook. Yeah. Bring you out of the bullpen, so to speak. Now, now tell me something. Could you have done that? Get you behind the bench, let's say. Coach Come comes over, play? gives you the hook, get out there. I, I think so. I mean, you know, you got to fire up and get it going quickly. Yeah, so you were a quick study then. Hey. I'm ready. I'll give you a trivia question in a moment after this point regarding team tennis. This ball floating up. Kafelnikov says that's going out. No way, right on the line. Clearly hits the line. Wow. A great replay. Okay, the only player in the history of team tennis never to have lost his serve. <laughs> Who would that be? Yeah. Here's two. Oh, wow. And I played only two service teams. <laughs> okay. One with Margaret Curry and one with John Lucas. So I picked a couple, a couple of pretty good partners. <laughs> that's good thinking. You got a good chance for those two. That's an interesting, uh, interesting tennis approach. World Team Tennis. It's a little different. Get that team flavor, team sport flavor, which is uh, I don't think hurts this game. No, I think it's a great concept. Also gives fans a chance to get involved, which most of the American sporting public likes to do. So a triple break point now, a double break point, and there it is. Thanks, Lewis. Kafelnikov broke it again. Hewitt leads seven times in the match. This is most amazing. Four love, Hewitt. Another unforced error, his 34th of the match. And Leighton Hewitt now two games away from reaching a Grand Slam final. You know, Mike, we talked about the day after the championship match tomorrow. Certainly got to be going through Hewitt's head now. He wants to concentrate, try and lock this thing out. But if he could win in straight sets in this short amount of time, it would, would help him 
especially if that other match goes long. Oh, did that one catch the line? Yes, it did. And here Paul. Hewitt from behind the like baseline. That. Cross courts another winner. Felnikoff thinks he's got a good approach shot. A couple of big jumps. See you later. To beat Hewitt the way he's playing right now. It's going to take some tremendous service games by either Murat Safin or Pete Sampras. Because if he keeps it in play, he's going to win points. Hewitt stays back. It's another win from that forehand. He is playing brilliant tennis right in Hewitt right now. 13 He's had winners on the forehand side and the backhand side 20 times equally distributed so it's not one side or the other you can attack. The only stat that's telling against you he's been in the net twice has not won a point. Guess what he's pretty smart he's staying back. Gets caught. Volley. Tried to get to the net, but didn't get quite to this position he needed to get to. Against Andy Roddick, Hewitt went to the net quite a bit. Yeah, he was Hewitt. Nice there. He's one game away from the Hewitt U.S. Open final. With a substantial lead over Yevgeny Kafelnikov. <laughs> Kafelnikov to serve. To try to play well. The semifinal. It's Edwin Hewitt. A five love lead. 15 love. In the third set. A big roar goes up from this crowd. Kind of a sarcastic roar. Kofelnikov finally wins a point. 30 loves. He's ace. He's fourth. So Kofelnikov's going to try to go out with a flurry. One, two, and love would not be too exciting to go back to Moscow and report. It was interesting. And a 40 loves. That's back to back aces. Many coming to life here. Kofelnikov, after a his quarterfinal win was asked about the coverage of his sport and he and Murat Safin back in Russia because because Safin had said there wasn't much interest in Russia in the tennis of yeah, the yeah, yeah. and he has survived and gotten a game in the third set with a good service game. But Kovalikov was saying he disagreed with Safin. He said I think there's plenty of coverage. I think there's interest every day. I I answer questions in Russian with the radio people and, and the writers so. It's, it's a, I guess, a different viewpoint between these two great Russian players as to how much interest level there is in their own home country. Fifteen lane. three points away now. Kolnikov's going to go down. He's going to go down with his guns blazing. That forehand just missing. Let's Look at Kim Kleister's over there. She's got to be feeling good at this point. Making plans for another day. 40 love. The U.S. Open. Another race. And you now with triple match point. So Yevgeny Kafelnikov in the semifinals of the U.S. Open. One point away Let's from the exit. Oh, and Hewitt thought he had it. It was a lot. Hewitt's lighting here. He was too busy shouting himself. That's the first smile we've seen from Hewitt today. He has been concentrating so well. Yevgeny had a little smile right there. 
for another ace. It's wide. Now a second serve. The Felnikov survives one of these match points. Layden Hewitt on the brink of a Grand Slam final. Off the line. Yeah. In. Stops here. intact. That's only his third time in. Has yet to win a point. I think we'll see him come in on this point. It's interesting that against Roddick, he came to the net 25 times. It is amazing. Or 32 times, I should say. 25 points won. And here only. Three approaches against Yevgeny Kavelnikov. I, I suppose he thought he needed to get there. Another match point. No, and he's in trouble closing this thing out. Thought he had it win with a big ace, but he's not to be. Following over here, a little frustrated. Three match points saved in a row by Evgeny Kafelnikov. Stranger things have happened. I remember back at the French one, punch patty up, two sets to love, five love, triple match point, he loses the match in five. Yeah. I hate to say that right now. Clayton would not want to hear that. That bunch is another match point, fourth of the game. Well, I knew it had happened at some point in history. But it can't have happened very often. No. <laughs> Felnikov's second U.S. Open semifinal about to end if Hewitt can win this point. Oh. Ooh, very close. Second serve. Fashion 6 1 6 2 6 1. And a big roar for the young Australian from this crowd. And enjoyed what they saw as we look at Kim Eichner's there in the blue. The part of your picture. And his girlfriend, but I think a very impressive win today, no question about it. He concentrated well, he hit all of his shots well, only allowed himself a little break with that smile when he thought he had the match won. Like so, uh, I tell you something, if Hewitt plays like this tomorrow against either Safin or Sampras, look out. He could be the next U.S. Open champion. Here's match point. Filnikov from the baseline, unable to stop Leighton Hewitt from reaching the U.S. Open final. And he can celebrate. It's been a great tournament, a victory over Andy Roddick and an emotional five-setter. And now this. Blowout of Yevgeny Kafelnikov here in three sets, an hour and 23 minutes.